the walrus operator. What is it and how can we use it in Python? Well, recently I found myself using it quite a lot when creating projects, so I thought I would share how it works with you guys. For those of you who don't know what the walrus operator is, it's this symbol here that kind of looks like a walrus. It's supposed to be two eyes and the tasks, or at least that's why they call it the walrus operator, because it resembles the face of a walrus, with a little imagination, of course. But this walrus operator was introduced in Python 3.8, and what it does is assign values to variables as part of a larger expression. Although that just sounds like a lot of legal jargon, so let's simplify this and actually create some examples so you can use it very soon in your own projects. So to demonstrate it, I'm going to create a function called analyze text, and it's going to return to us a lot of nice details regarding whatever text we decide to insert. So we'll have some details of type dictionary because we want to return a dictionary of cool information. And the first information we want to return is how many words are located in the text. And immediately we're going to create some parentheses for this key and we're going to type in words, which is a value we did not create yet. But then we can type in walrus operator text dot split. And then right below it, we're going to type in amount so we can get the amount of words and we can type in length of words. And as you can see in this very simple line of code or in this dictionary, we were able to assign a variable inside it while executing an expression and getting the value back from it. The benefit of doing this is that we don't have to do words equals text dot split and use a whole other line to actually do that. I mean, of course, it would look a bit cleaner maybe inside the dictionary, but what we did with the walrus operator was clean enough to understand that. And we were able to use it just inside here. That's a perfectly fine example of where you can use the walrus operator. So I'm going to remove that variable out there and we will continue in here. We can also say characters, which is going to be length of empty string dot join. And we want to join the words and reversed is going to be the words reversed. Then we can return the details. So in this example, we managed to save one line of code. But of course, you don't have to limit it to only one field. You can also do it with another one and another one. So instead of having four different, let's say, variables out here, we can have var, var2, var3. Instead of having all of these out here, you can just leave them inside the dictionary and use them for the next field if you know you're going to use them closely after. Now, when we actually print analyze text and we say, hello world, we're going to get a lot of good information back. The words are hello and world. We have two words and 12 characters. And reverse, we get world hello. So that's one place I really enjoy using the walrus operator. Next, suppose you have some user input of type string, and that's going to equal hello world. Now, something else you can do is use it with if statements. And I use it here a lot as well. You can type in if text walrus operator length of user input is more than five, then we can use that value. We can print, okay, the text is good. So text followed by a thumbs up because thumbs up means good. Else we will print the text and say thumbs down like this. And this parentheses should only be inside here. But now pay attention to what's going to happen when we run the program. We're going to get 13 characters returned with a thumbs up because here it was able to evaluate this expression. It first got the length of the user input, then it assigned it to text, and then it checked that text was more than five before trying to execute the if statement. So we did that all in one line of code. So we didn't have to type in text equals length of user input, and then check it down here. We were able to do it immediately inside the if statement. And personally, I use it a lot to check if a function returns a value or not. So for example, we have a function here that says get value. And we're just going to return none. By default, functions return none, but we're going to explicitly do so here. And what I would do in this example is check if var walrus operator get value, then I would use that variable. So I would have a way of assigning whatever values inside get value to this variable. Else we can type in print no value. And just like that, we were able to check whether this actually gave us back a value or not and assign it to the variable if it did. Otherwise we could 
execute something else. And that's one of my favorite ways to use it, just checking if something is empty or not. Otherwise, if you say, let's say value, it will return the value and assign it to variable in one line. So once again, we don't have to type in var get value and then check if var. You are able to do all of that on one line. And that's how you could use the Walrus operator in a nutshell. Quite effective, very simple to use, and it can easily help you clean up your code base by reducing the lines of code. And if there are other ways you tend to use the Walrus operator, please share it in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.